Our eyes are constantly inundated with a massive quantity of visual data, millions of forms, colors, and constantly changing motion all around us. This is no simple task for the brain. On the one hand, the visual world changes constantly as light, viewpoint, and other elements change. Our visual input, on the other hand, is always changing due to blinking and the fact that our eyes, head, and body are continually moving. This is very similar to the way our early artificial intelligence models work which pose the question in what ways they're actually still different from our way of thinking and perceiving the world. Welcome to today's episode of AI News. In this episode, I will show you how learning from our own brains will lead us on a direct path to artificial general intelligence. Place a phone in front of your eyes and capture a live video while walking about and looking at different things to get a notion of the noisiness of this visual input. Every minute of your visual experience, your brain has to deal with the frenetic, jumbled consequence. This is also demonstrated in the video below. The white circle on the right depicts perspective eye movements, while the fuzzy blob on the left depicts the constantly changing visual input. Seeing, on the other hand, is never a chore for us. We see a constantly steady environment rather than the variations and visual noise that a video would record. So, how does our brain conjure up this sense of security? For ages, scientists have been interested by this process, and it is one of the most fundamental topics in vision research. They uncovered a novel mechanism in one of the most recent studies that, among other things, might explain this apparent stability. Our visual input is automatically smoothed down by the brain over time. Rather than processing every single visual image, we experience an average of what we observed in the previous 15 seconds at any particular time. As a result, our brain deceives us into believing we are in a stable environment by grouping items together to make them look more similar. It's possible that living in the past explains why we don't notice little changes over time. To put it another way, the brain works like a time machine, constantly sending us back in time. It's like an app that combines our 15-second visual input into a single impression so that we can manage our daily lives. The world would be a chaotic place if our brains were constantly updating in real time, with continual swings in light, shadow, and movement. We'd constantly feel as though we were hallucinating. To demonstrate how this stabilizing mechanism works, we built an illusion. In the video below, the left half of the face progressively ages for 30 seconds, although it's tough to discern the full degree of the age difference. In fact, spectators mistakenly believe that the face is aging more slowly than it is. To test this illusion, we gathered hundreds of people and asked them to watch 30-second time-lapse movies with close-ups of faces evolving chronologically in age. When asked at the end of the movie to tell the age of the face, the participants nearly always responded the age of the face that had been shown 15 seconds earlier. We are always prejudiced towards the past while we view the movie, thus our brain repeatedly pushes us back to the prior 10 to 15 seconds, where the face was younger. Humans, instead of viewing the most recent image in real time, perceive older versions due to our brain's 15-second refresh delay. As a result, this illusion highlights how visual smoothing over time may aid perceptual stabilization. Procrastination is essentially what the brain is doing. It's too much effort to deal with every single photo that comes in, so the brain reverts to the past, which is an excellent predictor of the future. We basically recycle old knowledge since it is more efficient, quicker, and requires less effort. The theory of brain mechanisms that constantly bias our visual perception towards our previous visual experience is known as continuity fields, and it is backed by other findings. For the purpose of a pleasant visual perception of the world around us, our visual system occasionally compromises precision. This might explain why we don't detect tiny changes in a film over time, such as the difference between actors and stunt doubles, when we're viewing it. It's interesting looking at some of the skills that real AGI will need to master to grasp the intricacy of obtaining actual human-level intelligence. Perception through the senses. While deep learning has aided significant advancements in computer vision, AI systems are still a long way from achieving human-like sensory perception. Self-driving car systems have been deceived by little strips of black tape or stickers on a red stop sign, for example, despite having been taught using deep learning. The color of the stop sign is still visible to any person, but the deep learning-based system is tricked into believing it is something different. In addition, 
Current computer vision algorithms struggle to extract depth and three-dimensional information from static pictures. Even while listening to a monophonic telephone line, humans can deduce the spatial qualities of an area from sound. When talking over the phone, we may hear the surrounding sounds and develop a mental picture of where someone is, on a sidewalk, with cars approaching in the background. AI systems haven't yet figured out how to reproduce this uniquely human perception. Fine motor skills are required. A set of keys may be easily retrieved from a pocket by any human. Few of us would entrust that work to any of the robot manipulators or humanoid hands we've seen. This issue is being researched by experts in the area. In a recent demonstration, a robot hand was taught to solve a Rubik's Cube using reinforcement learning. Claude Shannon constructed a cube-solving robot decades ago, but this video shows the skill required to train robot fingers on a single hand to manage a complicated item. Rodney Brooks, an MIT roboticist and co-founder of iRobot, is blunt in his prediction that AGI won't come until 2300. It is a problematic period recognizing the genuine potential and perils of AI. The majority of what we read in the headlines is, in my opinion, utterly inaccurate. Brooks is far from an outspoken dissenter. Leading AI researchers like Jeffrey Hinton and Demis Hassabis have claimed that AGI is a long way from being a reality. Jan Le Kun, a professor at New York University's current Institute of Mathematical Sciences, is much more direct in his response to one of Brooks's posts. It's hard to explain to non-specialists that AGI is not a thing, and that most venues with AGI in their name deal in highly speculative and theoretical issues. Nonetheless, many scientists and researchers believe that human-level artificial intelligence might be reached within the next decade. Understanding human-level AI will be a tremendous scientific triumph, an economic windfall, and may possibly happen by 2030, 25% chance, by 2040, 50% chance, or never, 10% chance," said Richard Sutton, a professor of computer science at the University of Alberta, in a 2017 address. There are both beneficial and bad consequences to our brains processing our visual environment with this tiny latency. The delay is useful for stopping us from being constantly assaulted with visual information, but it may also have life or death effects when perfect accuracy is required. Radiologists, for example, review hundreds of photos in batches, looking at multiple linked images one after the other. Clinicians are often asked to identify and classify any abnormalities they see on an X-ray. Researchers discovered that radiologists' conclusions were dependent not just on the current image but also on photos they had previously seen during this visual search and identification exercise, which might have serious ramifications for patients. Because our visual system is slow to update, we might become oblivious to quick changes because it clings to our original impression and pulls us back in time. Continuity fields, on the other hand, foster our perception of a steady environment. At the same time, it's crucial to realize that the decisions we make on a daily basis aren't entirely dependent on what we see now, but rather on what we've seen in the past. So, what is your opinion on researchers finding more and more similarities between us humans and advanced artificial intelligence models as our knowledge expands? Do you think that it's really only the scale that differentiates our abilities? Please tell us your opinion in the comment section below. I would love to hear what you have to say about it. Thank you for watching AI News. We consistently report on the newest technologies that are shaping the future of our world. We'd appreciate you subscribing and watching our other videos. See you around and take care.